I'm willing to bet that you've heard from all your newlywed friends and family that their wedding day came and went in the blink of an eye. And it's true, there is so much anticipation and excitement throughout your engagement that if you're not careful, your entire celebration that you've worked so hard to plan will come and go in a complete blur. The beautiful news is that it doesn't have to be this way. And today on the Wedding Planning Podcast, I'm bringing on a very special guest to share the details of exactly how she designed a wedding celebration that left her saying this. I never have to look back at that experience and say that it went by too fast or I didn't get that quality time or I felt, you know, frustrated and frazzled and rushed and it went by and and it just doesn't even seem like it even happened. Like I never have to say any of that. I always get to look back on that and say that it was the most incredible four days of my life to this point and that I'm just so happy that I put in that time and that planning and all the conversations that we had, all the things that you helped me bring top of mind to keep uh, in my vision, to hold in my vision, to be a priority. It was just so incredibly helpful. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so excited to share this conversation with you. I truly believe that it can change the course of your entire engagement. I have a very extra special guest here today with me, my sister, Kate, who got married back in April of this year. Let's start with a quick introduction, and I will turn it over to Kate. Hey, friends, Kate here, and I'm super excited to be back on the mic to share a full recap of our incredible wedding weekend, or like Kara said, kind of our wedding week. (laughs) Again, my name is Kate, and I'm 39 years old, so was planning a wedding a little bit later than is typically expected. My now husband, then fiance, John and I were engaged for about a year and a half. We got engaged December and then married the following April. And we are from Puerto Rico. Okay, so those are the details. Next, I would love for you to set the scene for your overall wedding celebration. If you want to share where the wedding celebration happened, about your venue, how many people on the guest list, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely. So we are actually currently living in Puerto Rico. I'm not from Puerto Rico. I'm actually from San Diego, but we are living in Puerto Rico. And so we decided that we wanted our wedding celebration to be in our now home in Puerto Rico. So we invited about 105 people. And we were very intentional with our guest list. We wanted it to be our super immediate and close family and friends. And we decided to host the wedding and the entire weekend, the weekend of events, in our community because we thought, what an awesome way for everyone to just be able to stay super close together. We live in a gated community, so we were able to leverage Airbnbs. There's a hotel on property, and we thought that would just be a really cool way to have everyone super close together, make it easy to host multiple different events. And our budget for the wedding was 30000 Okay, awesome. So backing up just a couple of steps, as we all know, I am in love with the idea of extending your celebration out over multiple days, multiple events, the more parties, the better. So what is it that initially inspired you and John to want to plan a multi-day, multi-event celebration? Well, it was you. (laughs) It was definitely inspired by just thinking back across the many weddings that I've attended. I was sort of trying to pull inspiration from the different events that I had been to. And again, getting married a little bit later than is typical. I've been to a lot of other weddings. So I had a lot of, uh, you know, experiences to draw that inspiration from. And I kept looking back over all the weddings that I had been to. And yours and John's just stood out in my mind. So like, prevalent because of the multiple days that you guys did, the way that the celebration was able to stretch on longer than just, you know, the single ceremony and the reception. I just felt like 
it wasn't rushed. I felt like I was able to spend a lot of time with the people who were there. And I really wanted to create a similar experience for our wedding. Perfect. And for those of you who don't know, in the smallest nutshell version possible, my now husband, not to be confusing, his name is also John. This is my sister Kate and her husband's name is also John. And last PS on this note, we sound very alike. So if you're confused right now, I don't blame you. Anyway, John, my husband John and I got married in a four day celebration back in 2010. So we had a welcome party, a rehearsal, a reception ceremony day, and then we followed it up with a post wedding brunch. So that's the celebration that Kate is referring to. And then her and her John took this entire idea of a wedding weekend and made it so extra. And you're going to hear more about that. So Kate, I would love for you to get down and share some specifics with us. If we could kind of walk through each day of your wedding week, if you will. And starting at the beginning, if you can just give us a feel for your schedule, any unique activities, and maybe just the overall flow of events as we walk through your entire celebration from day to day. So our actual core wedding celebration was pretty much identical to what you and John did. But what we did that was a little bit different is we had really close family coming into town a couple days early. So we did the Thursday to Sunday, which I'll dive into a little bit more details on that in just a second. But for the Tuesday and Wednesday right before that, we had a lot of immediate family coming into town before the rest of our wedding guests arrive. So we actually did a family dinner on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, we did a beach day like right up the coast from where we live. And we just thought that would be a fun way to spend super dedicated time with our immediate family, have everyone get together and be able to kind of catch up and, you know, just have a fun Puerto Rico day and get everyone in the mood to celebrate. So that was kind of leading up to then what became our core wedding celebration, which everyone was included in, where Thursday night we did a welcome party. Friday, we did a day at the beach club, which is right in our community. So again, we live in a gated community. We wanted everything to be super easy for people to get to. So we did a day at the beach club, which has slides and the, all the kids were super excited about it. We had we invited kids to our wedding. So that was really fun. And of course, adults love beach clubs too. So we spent the afternoon there, did lunch, drinks, and then that evening was our rehearsal dinner. Saturday was our ceremony and reception day, and then Sunday was our farewell brunch. That was an awesome overview. There were so many other little moments and pockets that you so intentionally carved out. So I'll fill those in really quickly. There was the Wednesday evening when all of your wedding party went out to dinner And we had this amazing meal and wine and the best food at the cutest little Italian cafe restaurant near Kate and John's house. And John's aunt and uncle actually bumped into us while we were there and surprised the table with a bottle of champagne, did the most meaningful toast. I think we all had tears in our eyes. It was just a really, really special night. And then tell them like what the guys were doing that night. Because we did a really good job of breaking off and creating little pockets and moments where it wasn't necessarily 40 people doing the same thing every single night, but we kind of broke off into the bridesmaids are going to do this tonight, the groomsmen are going to do this, and P.S. we're going to leave all the children with the men while we go out to dinner, like... Yeah, that's right. So when we were at dinner that night, we that actually opened up our house for all the groomsmen to hang out. And I if I'm remembering correctly, there was a a playoff game of some sort. I think it was a basketball game. Yeah. 
Uh, so the Celtics were on, and oh, my John is from the East Coast. A lot of his uh, groomsmen and people who are coming into town are from the East Coast. So the Celtics game was a big to do. So they had a perfect in for hanging out at the house. They ordered a bunch of pizzas. They got to you know do some nighttime pool sessions. Got to watch the game, and I think the kids were super into it too. So it ended up working out perfect. We'll be right back with so much more after a quick word from today's show sponsor. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a -a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com And be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. And then I'm just going to highlight a couple more of these little intimate kind of pocket side events that we squeezed in there on Thursday morning, the day of the welcome party, we did coffee with our aunt and uncle, Kate's godparents, two sets of very close family friends, and then another couple who were incredibly close to. So call it maybe the 12 of us did a coffee date that morning, which was, again, really special because we got to sit down face to face with 12 people instead of 96 people. And you just get to spend so much time together. And then we did something very similar to that the morning of the actual wedding where we did a little bagel and coffee, super simple. It was nothing fancy. But again, it was so nice and so priceless to have that time one-on-one, especially with some of the guests who were older. So our mom and dad, our aunt and uncle, our godparents. During the wedding itself is just kind of a whirlwind of dancing and speeches and laughing and noise and drinking. And I think sometimes the older guests can kind of get lost or forgotten in that. So it was a really, really nice way to just really intentionally spend time with all of everyone with everyone so that you weren't waking up on Sunday morning thinking, shoot, I did not even get to talk to my godparents or I passed my aunt and uncle one time during the actual reception, but it was on the way to go do something else. And I feel so bad that I never stopped and had a conversation with them. Or we missed an entire table of relatives who there just wasn't time. And there were so many moments throughout the weekend, too, where people specifically commented on that, like, oh, my goodness, this is so awesome that you did this because I was feeling like maybe I wouldn't like uh, one of our very close family friends made this comment multiple times. You know, we were afraid that maybe we weren't going to get to spend this time with you. We're obviously happy to be here and so excited to be a part of the wedding. But getting to spend that extra time with you and having you include us in this way made us feel super special. And look, I wasn't blind to the fact that people were really investing a lot of time and a lot of money to make that trip. Puerto Rico is really far from California, and that's where a lot of my family was coming from. So for me to be able to set aside those specific little pockets was really important to me. And it was super special time for me. And I know that it was super special time for those who I invited to that as well. With all of the amazing highlight reels of that week, 
What would you say were some of the biggest challenges that you faced planning all of these multiple events across multiple days? What sticks out at you as something that you found yourself thinking, I just, I'm stuck on this and I cannot find a way to get through it? I really think a big part of that was just knowing that I wanted all those little pockets of time and not really feeling like I knew exactly how they fit without overwhelming the schedule. Because sure, you can have four days or five days or six days and you could jam pack them so that all of those days feel super crazy and frantic and, you know, just what we were trying to avoid. And so finding that medium of like, okay, I want to do this many things, but I don't want anyone to feel rushed. I want people to have downtime in between. So that if somebody wants to take a nap or go for a walk or do a workout or whatever it might be, that people weren't feeling like they were just hopping from one thing to the next. Like I wanted that space. And that wasn't super easy to figure out when you're thinking about six or seven or eight different events you know, how do each of those fit? How long should each of them be? And considering people having to get from their place to our place or from our place to the hotel or whatever it might be, just kind of figuring that out was, uh, it was a challenge. That's a really common one. And honestly, I see couples get kind of turned away and turned off on the idea of hosting multiple events for that very reason. But there are so many ways that you can just be really strategical. Strategical? Is that a word? Strategic. (laughs) And intentional about how you're designing those pockets of time exactly like you just said and how you can space them out properly. And there are just so many ways to do that. And it makes me sad because I do see a lot of couples miss out on this opportunity because they are stuck on not seeing how this can't be overwhelming. And it doesn't have to be overwhelming. There are so many ways around that. So I'm really glad you pointed that out. On that kind of on that theme, in hindsight, hindsight is 2020, we say it all the time. What would you have done differently? I think in the moment of planning all of these different things and just having such a huge focus and one of my biggest priorities in making this a really incredible experience for everyone who was coming, um, I think I maybe went like a little overboard with what I was wanting to provide for people. Like I do think that there's a fine line where you don't need to do everything for people. Um, And one thing that I think I did kind of go overboard on is I tried to provide transportation. And if you are like at a remote location and you just have your ceremony and your reception and you need to get people from point A to point B, I think transportation makes a lot of sense. But for us, having different events at different venues and locations over four days and having everybody staying at different places, I tried to add transportation to the mix and have vans like pick pick people up and bring them to locations and then take them back home at the end of the night. And in hindsight, our community is a golf cart community. Like if I could go back, I would have just said you should rent a golf cart or a car That is how you will get around for the weekend. And really, honestly, I would say probably 90% of people ended up doing that anyway. So the transportation was like a big added stress and just didn't add a ton of value. Yeah. Yeah. And then what would you say was your biggest surprise or the most unexpected aspect that came up over the course of the days? This was kind of along the same lines. I think that I went like, I didn't think that it was overboard in the moment, but I had like six different kinds of beer and like four different kinds of wine, maybe like four whites and four reds. And I think that I just created like too many options. And looking back and even thinking about the conversations that you and I had, like you said this to me so many times and you really stressed, like, keep it simple. Don't give people too many options. It's just going to create mess, really, unnecessary, like, decisions for people to make. And so 
I did I didn't see it in the planning process. I definitely saw it in the moment as it was happening. Like it was just too many options. I should have just kept it overall, just keep it more simple. And then of course to wrap it all up and bring us full circle, I would love to have you share your favorite memory. It doesn't have to be just one and any just moments that really, really stood out to you. I really do think it would be impossible to pick just one moment. Um, The whole entire weekend and the experience as a whole was life changing. It was so unforgettable. It was so such an amazing experience. And I think Overall, just to see everything come together and flow and know that I had done so much preparation, so much planning, like I had checked my boxes, I had you helping me every step of the way to see that all unfold and to actually get to be an active part of my vision that I had spent so much time on and thinking about like, What are people going to be doing at this point during the welcome party? And when we do that morning coffee at the hotel, like the kids are going to be playing with the iguanas. And when we have that pool day at the beach club, like everyone's going to be enjoying their food and we're going to be playing music. And at the ceremony, you know, when we're getting ready for that, like I'm going to have all this quality time with my bridesmaids and my girlfriends and my mom and my aunt and my cousins and just like Every single one of those moments I held in my vision and to actually experience those in real time was my favorite part. Like my vision came to life and that is a really incredible feeling. And honestly, one of my favorite parts is that I never have to look back on my wedding, that celebration, that experience, me and John joining together, sharing our love between one another and with our entire family, our closest friends. I never have to look back at that experience and say that it went by too fast or I didn't get that quality time or I felt, you know, frustrated and frazzled and rushed and it went by and and it just doesn't even seem like it even happened. Like I never have to say any of that. I always get to look back on that and say that it was the most incredible four days of my life to this point and that I'm just so happy that I put in that time and that planning and all the conversations that we had, all the things that you helped me bring top of mind to keep uh, in my vision, to hold in my vision, to be a priority. It was just so incredibly helpful and I'm so grateful for that. I would definitely say that one of the really special things when I look back on it, seeing everyone come together and be able to share that experience together, to be able to meet each other finally, to have the kids just like in pure bliss playing together, that was such a... I I did expect it, but I didn't expect like how meaningful that would be to join John, myself, together, our love, and also our families. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I really hope that Kate has inspired you to pause and just really take in the amazing once in a lifetime opportunity that a wedding weekend, like we talked about today, presents for you to connect with all of your closest loved ones. As for help with the details and mapping it all out, I am incredibly excited to share Wedding Weekend by Design my six-step online planning package for designing an unforgettable wedding weekend from start to finish. And a little insider secret for you, I actually originally made Wedding Weekend by Design for my dear sister, Kate. We spent 15 months meticulously answering every single question that came up as she designed the details of her four-day wedding celebration that she shared with us today. And then I packaged it all up to share with you because I want every couple to experience the joy, love, and the life-changing experience that a well-planned, well-thought-out wedding weekend has to offer. 
The intuitive planning framework inside Wedding Weekend by Design will proactively steer you clear of the mistakes that I see couples make over and over again so that you can design your entire wedding weekend with confidence, with ease, and with zero guesswork. To get started bringing your dream wedding weekend to life right now, simply visit weddingweekend.co. That's weddingweekend.co and take advantage of discount pricing when you enroll before June 15th. Weddingweekend.co. I can't wait to see you there.